Um, I was thinking of album covers for this, like me, like covering my face and, you know, like just labored rubbing it over my body and just be like, okay, guys, let's get through this. But, you know, Star Wars should be a labor of exuberance and not feel like pain. But here we are. <laughs> it shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. He says you it know, shouldn't. It's always the ones you love that hurt you the most. Uh, yeah. And we love Star Wars deeply. And so we're going through a little bit of pains. We're going through some growing pains right now. Um, and when I say we, I mean mainly Nick, Nick and I. Uh, Nick and Chris, me. Uh, didn't like it as much when we saw it, right? Uh, me? Yeah, Hot Boy Chris. That's so uh, That's where you I, got I, Hot Boy. So, <laughs> yeah, everyone should know that when I started on this show, my name was Producer Chris. Now my name is Hot Boy Chris. I will Hot Boy Chris. I will not be addressed any other way. Um, but I, after I think seeing it a second time, I liked it a little better because uh, it's easier to adjust your expectations. I think even you guys were able to adjust your expectations, you know, uh, slightly, even though you didn't like it. Uh, for me, <laughs> I I'm in the corner that I like the movie, but I do see that there are some glaring flaws. So yeah. it's just there. Both can be true at once. <laughs> so a little, little context here, by the way, you're listening to star Wars loose cannon. <laughs> this is our first episode uh, that we're not talking about Mando. So this is kind of great. Um, it's a nice like breath of fresh air. Um, but I'm Nick Oswald with me are my co-hosts, Alex Lowe. Hey, hey, hey. Patrick Ebersol. Hey, how are you? How you doing? How's your, how's your holiday? Hi. <laughs> and as you just learned, uh, no longer producer, but hot boy, Chris Higgins. I producer Chris. I'm trying to come up. Can anyone like come up, have a good Babu Frick impression? I Babu Frick. Ah, I Babu. Ah, uh, Hot Boy Chris. Uh, I got nothing. Mem- memory gone. <laughs> my name is Borat. I go around my apartment to my roommate and his girlfriend, constantly just creeping up on them, saying I Babu Freak. <laughs> So literally like the best part of the whole movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we, we had a little team building exercise where we went and saw Star Wars together. I mean, not not Alex, unfortunately, because he was still in the in the West Coast. Yeah. Um, but Patrick and uh, Hot Boy Chris and my friend John and I went to go see it on opening night at 7 p.m. at the Arclight Theater. Um, and uh, it... Uh, <laughs> It kind of got us feeling some ways. Uh, we had to go drink about it a little bit later. I'm just thinking about the arc of the night uh, because we went to King's Bowling and Pizza Bistro, whatever the hell it's called, and our waiter just immediately, he was like, hey, you guys here for the Star Wars? And we're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he was like, oh, no. Nice. I heard it sucks. No. <laughs> I know this didn't happen, but in my memory, I like to imagine we all high-fived him right after he said that. And then he kept on just alluding to Star Wars the entire time we were there. And he's like, have, I, I've heard good things. Have a great time, guys. And we're like, all right. And then we went and uh, snapped back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity, right? Yeah. And um, I, I, I felt an uh, enormous sense of guilt I think for not liking it. Um, and it, and it's weird because I think the internet has, again, we've had this conversation many times and the internet has shaped how I feel about how I feel about things. And, um, after the, after the, the last Jedi, I left the theater with Patrick and that was another time <laughs> feeling great about this movie and having no idea like that people would at all not like it. It's like, Oh my God, this is going to be the best star Wars movie ever. Everyone's going to be so excited about it. And yeah. boy, we wrong. But uh, on the other side, I felt enormous guilt. I think I turned to Hot Boy Chris and said, I think we're done. Uh, (laughs) Like, how can I talk about Star Wars now? Because this was, I hated it so much. And like, how can I think that we're Star Wars influencers, quote unquote, you know, Star Wars content creators and like, not like a Star Wars film. Um, But then again, you know, this, we weren't doing this for the prequels. So um, granted, I think you, you, you guys feel differently about the prequels than I did when I was a kid seeing it because I was older. Um, so may, I don't know. I, that might have been how I felt uh, after Attack of the Clones, and maybe I felt the same way. So it's still on brand for a Star Wars feeling, if you will. <laughs> I Let me say, I think a lot of the difference in our takes on it are 
kind of an expectation thing, which I know we talked about already, but I feel like I'm far lower on the first two films of this trilogy than you guys are. Um, and then far higher on the third one, but I feel like they are exactly the same quality of movie to me. Um, so it, it's not like I like this one way better than I did the first or second one. They're all just kind of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we, Nick and I saw force awakens together when that came out. And I think a lot of force awakens at the time was just, uh, the recapturing of the nostalgia of how great it was to see a Star War and the old fashioned kind of Star War and the spectacle of that and whatnot. And, um, you know, I actually rewatched uh, Last Jedi and Force Awakens before seeing Rise of Skywalker. And Force Awakens is fine, uh, but I just like watched it again and I was like, yeah, there's not much going on here. It's kind of just, oh, there's Harrison Ford and he's wearing his old costume. And oh, there's like Carrie Fisher and she's wearing her old costume. But in terms of, you know, they're, they're kind of creating the initial, like, cool ideas of, like, oh, there's, like, a stormtrooper or an ex-stormtrooper. That's cool. Let's see what happens with him. There's this mysterious girl. We don't really know what's going on with her. They're alluding to things with her, but hopefully we'll find out. And so I think there's that's the benefit of the first movie when you know there's going to be a trilogy is that there can be a lot of dangling threads and you don't really mind. Um, and you can just enjoy all the spectacle and wackiness and the, you know, feeling of, nostalgia that you have for star wars with that one um last jedi i think we've talked a lot about last jedi but i still like it i watched it recently i don't like the jokes as much the humor doesn't hold up as well for me anymore but uh, otherwise i like all the stuff aside from like canto bite too um but then yeah rise of skywalker i saw it it just was i walked out feeling hollow i felt honestly similar to how i felt uh with this last season of game of thrones any other people who we're watching Game of Thrones, where it was just a, a lot analogy. of a lot of stuff needed to be done, and we had our fingers crossed for like a satisfying ending, and um, the bar was nowhere near met for me, at least in terms of some answers and some like bringing. <laughs> it's basically like they had to bring the plane in for a landing, and they just like nose dived it into the ground. They're like, "Well, it's on the ground now, guys, right?" At least there'll be something to watch. <laughs> yeah, so um, so that's just generally how I felt. It was just I felt like. JJ again leaned into hoping that he could rely a ton on nostalgia again, and that was it. And I feel like um, there wasn't really anything else there. And, and at this point, nostalgia had worn off for, for me personally. So, yeah. So what you're saying is you used to be more into the nostalgia? Yeah, was, I'm nostalgic for nostalgia. That's what 2019 did to me. <laughs> I guess we're already into the 2020 decade, obviously at the time of this recording. But um, I guess what, you know, when Rise of Skywalker came out, we were so close to 2020. I think we're over the nostalgia era in a way because 2010s kind of had, I, don't, I mean, not to say that the 2000s didn't have that, but the 2010s definitely had a thing for nostalgia and like the member berries, if you, if you want to watch that star or not Star Wars, uh, if you want to watch the South Park episode about member berries, exactly. It's like, hey, remember Han Solo? Remember how he's got kind of slightly different jacket? Remember how, oh, so it's a bigger Death Star? But I don't remember having any of those negative feelings uh, on the, uh, the Force Awakens. Like, I came out of that movie pumped because I guess it was sort of like a palate cleanser after the prequels. Like, okay, we're yeah. back to feeling Star Wars again. I think, I think what for me a lot of it was cool they did the obligatory here's all the old guys they're going to be in the background and we're going to see some new stuff built off of that foundation off of like the old world of star wars and we're going to see what new things happen you know i've never seen what a stormtrooper is like without the helmet on before now we have a character that can show us you know what it's like to not only leave uh you know the, the empire the, the first order whatever but also how they like grow out of that and it's also someone who's not a Jedi. We're not like obsessing over him being a Jedi. Um, Poe Dameron, there's a lot there. Obviously, it was just a lot of room for growth. Um, and I think there's the expectation of like, cool, let's see where this goes. And the second movie was, it went a lot of ways that nobody expected. And some people were really excited by that. I was, there's a lot of people who were really pissed off by that, you know, and that's fair. Um, and then the third movie was just like, no, 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 let's bring it all back to stuff we can all expect and not really like let's let's keep everything fun sides here let's make everything easy to chew and easy to digest and not push anything and not upset anybody and um as a result it was just like a really bland movie that just was like hey remember carrie fisher here's her digital face saying soundboard quotes 
um, this will do wonders for the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, we did. There was a lot though. of a lot of Carrie Fisher. Yeah, but like Some is that the most? Much. Is that the most of a dead person that's been in a movie? I mean, and, and here's the thing: the overall thing for me is that, and I think almost everyone can agree on this, whether you like Rise of Skywalker or not, is that Disney should have put time into creating what their three act structure was for these movies before they even had other directors sign on so they all knew generally what template they're working on across these three movies um so i think they really had one plan which was we're bringing carrie fisher back for the third movie and then when what happened to carrie fisher happened that's it's awful but they were like we're not diverting from the plan yeah. <laughs> yeah. and they had two years right to yeah. sort of react to that well they, I, apparently jj abrams had even less time for pre-production on this one and production than he because did on of Force Awakens. Trevorrow, right? Yeah, and and yeah. Disney did not want to budge on when the release date was. Um, they were like, no, get it done. So it resulted in what I think is a very poorly made movie and poorly you know, created story, so. I think that's one of the things that sticks out to the most me of, of on the negative side for me is you can just tell they just did not have a clear, they just didn't know how it was going to end when this move before this movie started. Like they did not yeah. know this trilogy was going to end before this movie was created. And it shows when the movie, like I feel like it really shows in certain points, like when Ray gets her last name revealed as Palpatine. I think full spoilers, by the way, guys. We're oh, going yeah. full spoilers oh, yeah. on this podcast. I don't know why sorry. you're listening to this. Yeah. I mean, I hope that's go, clear. Go for it, Chris. Yeah. yeah, sorry. But that to me, I was like, okay, so weren't really any clues to that, nor were there any clues that, you know, Palpatine was going to be the main villain. I just feel like it's fine to it's not that there's inherently a problem with him being a villain. It's just I don't think there was really any indication for two whole movies that he was still in play. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the big frustration for me was that each movie felt like it was building towards something. And there was some, like, I, I feel like last night I kind of picked up some aspects of what Force Awakens handed off. And then Last Jedi was over. And then so much of Rise of Skywalker was just trying to say, like, no, 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 we're only going to remember what happened in Force Awakens and not what yeah. happened in Last Jedi. And so all the development, regard, like, from both of the two movies was extremely stunted and... They had to just start bringing new characters into this movie instead of focusing on the characters they had and they had to bring in for a landing. And so as a result, it was overstuffed. There was no real conclusions. There was no satisfying ending to like what was what was Poe's arc over the last three movies, right? Okay. Like what was what was Finn's arc? The only arc we really had were, were Kylo and Ray. And like granted, they're the best part of the three movies, but I'm sure. You know, in part, it's it's obviously due to the acting abilities of Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver, for sure. But it's also due to the fact that they had an arc. Like, they each had, like, moments of character development throughout all the three movies. You know, so just... Yeah. Uh, the arc on. of Ray and Finn... I'm sorry, of Finn and Poe was that they were Ray's friends. Yeah. Yeah. That's Finn would arc. come out and just scream Ray every movie, and they're like, and that's enough from him. And that, right! was, that was, yeah. Ray! Yeah. Like, I, I felt every, for him. Actually, absolutely every set piece in this movie is to move the Ray Kylo scene forward, right? Or move that plot. It's like, so we're, what, are, what are these people doing for Ray right now? And what are these people doing for Kylo right now? And much like the uh, the looming Sith Eternal awaiting on Exegol for 20 years watching Motocross, there's this kind of four-year uh, menace behind these two movies that, I th like I said, I had very positive feelings about The Force Awakens because I gave them the benefit of the doubt that there's going to be three movies to really hit home what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the one thing is they do not, and we're going to have to do an episode about this because if you watch... If you watch these three movies, you have no idea the motivations of the First Order. What mm -hmm. are they doing? Why do they exist? Like, why does it seem like they're that powerful at the beginning? And yeah. does it just seem like, well, do the events of the original trilogy just kind of revert? And, like, everything just goes back to pre-Return uh, of the Jedi? Because I thought maybe there was going to be some cogent thing at the end of, of The Rise of Skywalker, or at least this movie, that would say here's their motivation, this is why that exists, 
And the only way you can get this information is if you read the source material <laughs> and things like this. Yeah. The book that poor Pablo de Hidalgo had to write after this movie, and I'll make a point about this. I, the story group basically has to be the janitorial crew of all of, all of the directors and writers. Because to me, it seems like they're given a very long leash because they're people like J.J. Abrams, they're people like Ryan Johnson, and they came in and said, make us a Star War. And they have crazy ideas, and they have their mystery boxes if you're J.J., and your subversion of expectation if you're Ryan. And then uh, poor Pablo has to come in and say, oh, okay, let's stitch this back to canon um, and so this book goes into a lot of details, cool details, things I enjoy reading about that you would never understand or see just by watching the films. And that's all well and fine to do world building. I love world building. I love me some George R.R. R. Martin 10 page articles about food, but like <laughs> I need to, the, the world building, the comics, the books, the visual dictionary need to be something that I'm compelled to read because I think something is cool not because I need to understand what the hell just happened. And so that's the big thing that suffers. I think JJ is given a really long leash to do whatever he wanted and to just like whiz bang, crash the freighter into the ground to get this done. And then we have to figure out what happened. And the first order makes still no sense until you read about it. So, and, and this is one area for me that I, um, I'm curious about like what my perspective would be if I hadn't seen like every uh, guys, I got to do this every podcast. Uh, if I hadn't seen every Marvel movie, uh, <laughs> what my perspective would have been on like Endgame, for example, where you know, like Captain Marvel shows up in that, starts fighting Thanos. And if I hadn't seen Captain Marvel, you know, I would be like, who's this super powerful lady, whatever. So the reason I bring it up is that um, I think that Disney is really confident after how well those movies did that they think that they can do this stuff with these new Star Wars movies where they just say, we can intentionally leave stuff out just as a means to basically bait people into wanting to wait around for Disney Plus episodes or new comics or new video games, but they don't understand the balance of when to do that yet, right? Well, the big like, difference is that points to another film, right? Yeah. You can go watch, and if you've been keeping up, you probably already saw, because well, Captain Marvel came out before Endgame, right? Yeah. That was yeah. after... It's the last uh, one before Endgame. Right, last one before Endgame, because it had to stitch up why this person would come and save Tony Stark. So yeah. that points to another film. This is pointing to books, which is just an entirely different medium. Like, I think if you are going to make films and if they are the tentpole of your world building, then they they should be they should exist in themselves. And if I watch the nine films, it, they just make sense. And I read the books because I'm a dork. And I just want to know the minutia and win arguments, not because I need to understand the motivations of the main, you know, antagonists. One again, I think it also speaks to level. This was like uh, Kathleen Kennedy was was it Kathleen Kennedy? Is that her name? Is Kathleen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Cool. Uh, <laughs> she, she she got like you know slapped by the internet recently because she had that quote where she said. Oh yeah, those movies, those Marvel movies were really easy or like really great to make because we they had so much source material to draw upon. Star Wars doesn't, which yes, true to a degree, sure. But the the difference there is that when they make when Marvel makes their their decisions of what they're going to explore in their movies, they make movies that are strongly inspired by existing comics and they take a little bit from a bunch of different arcs and smash them together. They say, here are basically our inspiration boards for what we want to do with these movies. We want to like evoke these different comics and we'll see how we can make a cohesive story out of this, like being inspired by it. Whereas what I think they're doing with Star Wars is they're basically saying like, we're going to make a movie and we're going to try and rip parts out of this movie that then we'll try and use for people to run off to go read these things instead. Like, I think it would make a lot more sense for them to go to the Thrawn, Thrawn you know, books or, you know, the games and say, okay, like, let's make Kylo inspired by like Darth Revan or something. That was a really great arc that a lot of people liked. And it doesn't have to follow that exactly. It just has to have, it has to be like poetry, it has to rhyme. Um, but I, it, it just, it's so sloppy and frustrating to me that they don't know the difference between like what Marvel is doing versus what they're doing. Yeah. So, well, I think something different too, with the Marvel movies, uh, not going to say it's easy to bring in those worlds, but, but I think it's, it's easy to pull bits and pieces because most of those movies 
other than the Avengers ones that bring everyone together, are kind of centered around caring about only a couple of characters, where the Star Wars trilogy, one of our complaints is that there's really only two characters that are given an arc, but that's kind of what they do in most of the superhero movies. You know, you watch Iron Man, it's Iron Man and whatever villain kind of have their arc. There's not a ton of plot development for Jarvis or other characters. Um, I watched Aquaman yesterday. That's not Marvel, but it wasn't terrible. Um, I, I, I just, I feel like with how many characters they're trying to make you care about in these Star Wars things, it's really hard to these Star Wars things. I sound like a, a true expert. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the, great off, you know? the great killing uh, off, you know. The great killing's off. How yes, dare you? Uh, but uh, no, it's there's so many characters that like we're just getting little pops of. It's almost impossible to have an arc for that many unless it's very strictly planned out. Like if they just made this trilogy of movies, the Thrawn trilogy. I also think like. Finn and Poe had the potential, though. I think there could have been a better story. Oh, for sure. For it's, sure. Right? I mean, it's not like it's they... It's basic A plot, B plot, C plot. It's like they can do that in three episodes of The Office, but they can't do it in three different Star Wars movies, Three acts right? of, a, of yeah. a film, right? Yeah. Of, of a film with the largest budget, budget possible, right? Yeah. I thought, I thought Poe was set up for a really cool ev- like evolution of becoming a leader and becoming a general. And he did become that, but he went from being like this, you know, upstart who, who just ignored the chain of command to someone I thought who would be become more wise, but he's really, I mean this, in this movie, I didn't really see that happen. I just saw him be the same guy for the most part, but he had a lot of passion. So he was space. Indiana Jones was what he was. <laughs> that, was that was pretty much what they had him be. Woo. So. Ooh, great shot. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm going to do yeah. a cool spaceship thing mm-hmm. now. And Ray. <laughs> <Don't get laughs> <away now. laughs> so I don't want to spend too much time because the, the episode of is called how to fix it. I don't want to spend too much time ragging on the fact that they've made mistakes. I want to talk about maybe the main things that could be fixed because in all honesty, as much as people said, oh, poor JJ, uh, he didn't have much to work with and he had limited time and he had the Last Jedi to deal with, I think he could have made a plenty fine movie with all of those limitations. He's the best director right now, quote unquote. He's like the biggest Hollywood movie maker right now. He could have done anything. So I I'm gonna, agree. I'm going to put this down into, and I'm going to create rules for this because I'm going to make three main buckets that I think could could help this movie. And I'm going to start with the first one. Slow the movie down. The movie is way too fast. There's way too much crap that they, that they jumble into it and stuff that they don't even need that some of the other cool things or the, the threads they start to pull on would be better if there was less stuff to watch and it was slower, which is like Patrick said, kind of like the complaint with game of Thrones is why did it have to be six episodes? Why make that make that mofo ten episodes and slow it down so we all like everything that happened? Yeah, I mean, would people have been people have been more angry about a quadrilogy than a trilogy than they are about one bad movie, like one one bad ending? Right. Like, I it very much feels like it's something that should have been split into two movies. Um, give it time to breathe because. From when I was watching, it felt like every scene was just an exposition dump. Like, two characters yeah. talking was never two characters talking for the sake of development. It was two characters talking for the, for the sake of how do we get to our next spot. This is the reason why I have to be here right now to do this thing. Yeah. And, this is, and we have to show you that Ray can do this so she does it at the end. You know, yeah. like, and I think you could cut a lot of that out and slow it down. Like, from the very beginning, I got whiplash watching that thing because usually <laughs> the first when, line of the movie is the dead speak. Emperor, emperor palpatine's back the dead speak <laughs> and, and then, then you're like oh um, interesting oh i usually guess build up us uh, seeing palpatine and then you see him in the first five minutes of the movie sorry i just said to say <laughs> well usually when the crawl uh ends they pan to a, cl- a planet and then they have some things happen that slowly get to you to that planet either a space battle or they show landers but they show a planet and then immediately kylo's killing people He's and by the way that's mustafar did you know that <laughs> yeah 
That's Mustafar, by the way, because it's starting to heal itself. There's a really cool chapter in this Pablo Hidalgo book about how Mustafar is healing itself. Why don't you just read Pablo Hidalgo for us? Well, yeah, maybe that's a that's an entirely different show. But here, here's the thing: the Wayfinders crap, it's gotta go. Bye, Wayfinders. Those there's three MacGuffins in this movie. They, we didn't need that one. So, like, one thing that I said is they could cut the Wayfinders, and we already know that R2 knows everything in the galaxy and has every map. Just make it so he knows how to get to Exegol. Mm-hmm. Why not? And, and that, just yeah. maybe the fact would be that nobody knows that there's stuff happening on Exegol, so nobody would have thought to go there. But R2 is like, okay, sure, I'll show you guys how to go there. Why, Why not? Don't you change the name, the Sith Wayfinder. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Sith TM. Yeah. <laughs> And so, okay, so cutting the Wayfinders, don't have Kylo go to Mustafar or Exegol right away, because that just killed the vibe for me, because that entire, like, oh, by the way, Crawl happens, Palpatine's alive, and we're sending Kylo there right now. And the whole line with, like, I've been every voice inside your head, like, that would have been really cool later in the film, when I've kind of had a chance to breathe, but, like... Oh my god, like if you cut some of the stuff and spent more time on the stuff we liked, because there's some cool stuff in there, uh, I think it would have made a lot more sense. Thoughts on that? Um I, I I think the big thing for me was um not only letting things breathe, but like a movie, you're whenever you're watching a movie, it's supposed to build. That way when you get to the third act, you're excited, whatever. The way the way that this movie felt was that from the get go, like you were saying, the it's like that scene from SpongeBob. Here's a deep cut where he's he's getting the driving instruction with the the puffer fish lady, and she's like, okay, so what do you do next? And he's like, floor it. She's like, no. And he's like, floor it. And she's like, no. And he goes, floor it. And he floors the car, and they go like flying off the road and crash into something. And that was J.J. Abrams making this movie. <laughs> This movie, this movie had no sense of like, <laughs> let's slowly ramp up to a high speed at the end of this movie. Like if you saw Avengers Endgame, which they were clearly trying to mimic the third act of that with this movie, if they right out the gate had the big Thanos battle with every character from the Marvel films all fighting at once in the first five minutes of the movie, you'd be like, oh my, holy shit. And then you'd be fatigued by the end and not even pumped when you see some, some other crazy stuff happen. Yeah. So this movie opens with you seeing Kylo Ren body slamming random nobodies on Mustafar. And you don't know it's Mustafar, to your point. You don't even know what yeah, it is. You would never know. And then you're like, okay, cool. I guess the Emperor's back. Um, I thought that was something they're just teasing in the trailers, but yeah. no, they're just telling us now. Well, it'll be, cool to, it'll be cool to figure out how he came back into this fold of everything. And then like the next scene is like, hello, I'm back. I've been behind everything through all the films, and uh, here we go. And you're like... Oh, so this is how we're seeing him? It's not like a big reveal. It's just he's here dangling on this space hanger, you know? Right. Just Here's you know, my uh, terrarium of Snokes. Yeah. yeah, okay. I've been every voice in your head. Yeah. Um, so, sorry. The hate's flowing through me. But uh, I had to just vent a little bit on that sense. Like, I, it would have been a lot better if we had time to build up to the end of the movie as opposed to the whole time it feels like this, like, breathless sprint. Yeah. Absolutely. I and there's cool stuff in this movie. Like, yeah. Kajimi is awesome. The Death Star battle is awesome. Zori Bliss is cool, uh, but throwaway because we don't spend enough time on her. Babu Frick, awesome. X Stormtroopers become a freedom force, awesome. But we don't actually get to really like them because we speed on past them and they give us some exposition and we go to the next scene. Yeah. I remember the scene where we first met Carrie Russell's character. That was one moment where I think I felt a sense of relief because it felt like the first moment in the movie where they were stopping on a planet to kind of just get their bearings and the the pace was slowing down a bit. And next thing you knew, they're like, oh, stormtroopers are after us. Run! (laughs) Again, went crazy. Like, you know, pace went right back up again. And we never got a chance to really rest yeah. with some It's like characters. World War II village where all these stormtroopers are knocking on people's doors and you can hear them marching. It was like a nice motif and cool things to look at. Babu Frick just like stealing the show. Um, again, we could do C-3PO because uh, like I said, in my version of this movie, we we know where Exegol is. But we could think of some other thing to reprogram C-3PO. I'm, God knows we could think of something and then still have Babu Frick. Well, and then this is one thing um, – to that um it's more of a macro thing i know we're kind of sticking 
chronologically right now. Um, but I wanted to note this because I don't see this in our notes is that the stakes in this movie don't really feel like they're there to me. Um, like, of course, there's the stakes of later we find out that every Star Destroyer now has the ability of a Death Star. So they just randomly start blowing up planets because JJ had to check that box. Is like, cool, it's a Star Wars movie now. A planet exploded. But, um, you know, every, every like more minute, you know, more intimate risk gets immediately like the rug gets pulled out from under it. So we see Chewie supposedly blow up in a ship and everyone's like, oh God, like they're really going for broke in this one. They just killed off Chewie. And yep. then they're like, oh wait, no, like literally <laughs> third, like about 30 seconds to a minute later. Wrong ship. They immediately, yeah, actually no, it wasn't. And it just feels like a cheap punch, like a, like yep. a cheap trick. And then they do the C-3PO thing. Oh, we have to wipe his memory. Like, oh, okay, here's another big risk they're taking. And I have to basically, like, they're basically killing the C-3PO we know. And then they're like, oh, wait, we got a backup. We got another one. Which, yep. this is the petty thing. The backup that's on R2 has none of the events from Last Jedi on it. So C-3PO only remembers Force Awakens forward. That was the last time he saw R2. So they literally erase... Last Jedi from C-3PO's mind. That's one thing. <laughs> it's like Slash Film says, this was a referendum on The Last Jedi. Like, yeah. Essentially, it's like, hey, by the way, cancel that movie because the chuds didn't like it. You know. Like, yeah. And then Kylo getting killed and then brought back to life. And then Rey getting killed and then getting brought back to yeah. life. And Kylo does die, but after being brought back to life, like, what is it? He gets you guys brought back to life by Twice. Rey one Twice. time. And he then he, like, falls down the pit and comes back up. And that's another time. Um, so there's never any time where you really no. feel like there's there's a real risk of of you know terrible things happening here. Um, I note on, on Chewbacca too. If you're gonna kill my favorite character, do it. Right, and he's my favorite character in the world. I I think I looked at you. I'm like, fuck this movie. Yeah. Um, when yeah. that happened, I'm like, this sucks. Yeah, it was just lazy. It was lazy yeah. and it was cheap, and it just felt like they were like being extremely manipulative. They the want you to That's... feel the emotion, but they don't want to have to face any of the consequences. None yeah. of the characters have to have any consequences for their actions, and that, and I that was one of my I, I love that you nailed all those on the head because that was one of the things that pissed me off. And another thing, one other thing that I didn't like is how Ray consistently used the dark side, consistently used anger throughout. The Last Jedi, and now this movie, which Luke warned her about doing. He told her, don't go to the dark side. She used it. The Jedi have always warned against going to the dark side. She was considered, I think, to be a Jedi. But she even used Force Lightning, but she has none of the cons of it. You, There are supposed to be a price to pay for using the dark side, but there was zero for her. She's just a beacon of purity and goodness and... Nothing can corrupt her, and I did not like that about it. There was no like uh, bridge too far for her, like Luke had, where, hey, I could go kill my dad right now, but well, I'm just gonna like be a martyr instead. Like there was none of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's still like the greater point for me. I think is that they like to play with these ideas, but they never wanted to actually deal with the repercussions of them or actually like dedicate themselves to it. So if you're gonna kill Chewie, kill him. Let yeah. us sit with it. Let us figure out how the other characters will react to it. That's that. If you want to play with the idea of Ray going to the dark side, do it. Mm -hmm. They even like they have her switch back to the light side, and then in a random moment, she's talking to Finn, and she's like, "I'm gonna go destroy Kylo Ren." And he's like, "Oh, that sounds weird." And she's like, "I don't think you guys know who I really am. I have the capacity to be evil." And then they just have her go back to yeah. being good again. And I would just, have yeah. liked to have explored that. Her being yeah. in being going to that area and then maybe having to be redeemed and then maybe Kylo yeah. Ren being the one to redeem her since he was the one that went to the light side. Like if we're talking yeah. about how to fix it, honestly, I think that would have been more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So so I mean, if I can give a note for how we could have fixed these, how we could have made them better. That's the point give, of this episode. Yeah. Give give us some stakes. Like really turn the knife a little bit because if we know that there's gonna be a happy ending at the end, we know that you're not gonna leave the last you know three of these movies with something really terrible you know the beginning of uh infinity war starts with like loki's neck being snapped Every, all those characters turn to dust obviously that gets reversed later but it was still a gut punch we had to sit with for like a year and a half before we figured out how they did that you know tony stark dies like all these yeah, people vision is actually dead there's actually stakes where we have to sit with it and you're like 
good God. And yet the whole first third of Endgame is you looking at a desolate planet where everyone's depressed and going to support groups all the time. Yeah. Like they, they made you sit with it. With this movie, there was never really a moment where it was like, okay, we got to pick ourselves up. Like the end of The Last Jedi, again, ended with the Resistance being on like stranded on a planet with no one coming to help them and feeling abandoned and lost by everybody. And then this movie just started back with like, anyways, we found a jungle planet and uh, we have we have friends again. Like, it yep. just it just got rid of everything of the big hammered into a corner. So um, again, give us some stakes. Put some stakes in the movie. It'll make the audience feel a lot better when they win in the end after being like an underdog. Rant over on that issue. No, the <laughs> stakes part I think is perfectly in my bucket of slow the movie down because speeding the movie up, you know, crashing the jumbo jet made it so nothing felt good. Like not, there was nothing, no feel. There actually, here's the thing: it's not that it felt bad after that movie. I felt nothing after that movie. Yeah. Yeah, but I again, that's what I've been saying for, and I know I'm in the minority of us four on this, but that's what I've been saying for this entire Disney Star Wars run. Sure. None of them have made me feel anything, and I don't know if the prequels made me feel something just because of the age I was when I saw them. But I. I sure as hell no the original trilogy made me feel things and like was thinking about it afterwards and had a desire to rewatch. and i throughout none of these movies have i been upset to be watching it or like bored or wishing i wasn't watching it but i'm also when it's over it's over yeah i think most of the people that like the last jedi a lot are not gonna like this one I, I, that was cause... a poll that I put out. I thought maybe I'd see more from that as people that didn't like The Last Jedi liking this movie and then flip-flop. But I think it's a little bit new, more nuanced from that, but yeah. I think that you have a good point there. There is somewhat of a trend of that. Um, I haven't have don't, I don't have nearly as much data on it as Nick, as you'll hear from my anecdote I'm about to say. But I had a friend who really did not like The Last Jedi. <laughs> And he like he was waiting. He was like, I was trying to be quiet about what my thoughts were on Rise of Skywalker because I didn't want to bias him on what his thoughts would be on it. Mm-hmm. Finally, he went and saw it, and he came back, and he was like, "That was so bad." Like, I, <laughs> I actually, I actually, it makes me want to watch the Last Jedi, and I hate that I'm saying that. So yeah. I think that yeah, there's some complexity there, and I think that there's a level of like, I don't know, like to me, it just feels like it's not really respecting the story. Like I feel like. Um, the, a lot of people, I think, as much as they hated The Last Jedi, would have preferred, okay, that's what happened. Let's move forward and just build on it and see where we go from here, mm-hmm. right? Well, but, it's like when a major company makes a PR decision that pisses off half the people globally for a political reason. And mm-hmm. then, you know, like, they they see that half the people are mad so that they backtrack a little bit. But now mm-hmm. the other people are that were supportive are also mad, but you didn't win anybody else back. Yeah, right. the whole the whole the whole movie felt like it was too afraid of making anybody upset. So they like again they went halfway on all their decisions, and then just like annoyed everybody as opposed to you know yeah. potentially angering people who wanted a safe movie or potentially exciting people who wanted you know a riskier movie or a bolder movie. I never yeah. ri- risk. I never realized your thing about three PO, but that's totally it's like hey, uh, I don't remember the events of the Last Jedi yeah. at all. Which they didn't have to do. They like, um, went out of their way to do that. So, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm going to go move on to my second bucket. Yeah. So first bucket, slow the movie down, feel some more things about it. Second bucket, Palpatine plot sucks. It just sucks. Everything right, about can, it. Can I just say, I kind of think Palpatine sucks. Sure. I've never enjoyed Palpatine. And it's always bugged me that, like, Darth Vader had this big lore, and he's really awesome until you find out that he's really not and he's just doing what Palpatine tells him to do. Yeah, he's kind of just a, like meme material, really. Like, obviously, that's more of the modern take on it in the last five, six years. But he's just kind of a joke in a way. And, like, we riff on him, obviously. The internet riffs on him. But, like, I did not really like him being the big bad in this episode. So, and, and here's the thing, too, is that Palpatine essentially, or Sidious, rather, I guess I should say, yeah. like, he... He just exists as, like, pure evil. And that's why, you know, for better or worse, like, he doesn't really have a lot of complexity to him. He's just, like, this money-hungry ghoul man in a robe 
that just wants to, you know, use his unlimited power to make the world or galaxy bend to his will. There's nothing more complicated than that. That's it. And so when you have Kylo, who in The Last Jedi, he's the big bad at the end of the movie. Like, people were expecting it to be Snoke. Snoke gets killed off. It's Kylo. Kylo is a way more interesting villain to be looking at than Sidious, right? He has way more complex motivations. You understand why he's doing a lot of the things he's doing, right? He's conflicted. Um, and there's stakes there with people who have relationships with him. Sidious, again, he's just this, he's the evil guy. It's basically like Dracula showing up and you're like, well, he's the bad guy. He does bad things. Um, and, and it's like, again, very, um, predictable and simple and one note. So when he was on his little contraption crane arm thing, like that was the most interesting thing about him was that he was decaying. Yeah. And that little, his little cackle and the, the way that they did it at Star Wars Celebration where Ian McDermott comes out and says, ruin it again. Like that was the most interesting part of his actual involvement. And the weird thing is, is like, I thought it's like, okay, this is going to be more clever than this. Right. And we don't see him in the main trailer because he's just kind of like, people are reacting to him instead of you seeing him, which is a good thing. But then like, I thought like, all right, this is going to be done more delicately than that. He's just not back doing the same things again. Right. Like it's going to be something. And from the crawl, all of a sudden it's just, uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's here. And he's uh, uh, talking to people in the galaxy. He's here. The dead speak. And, like, the crawl is honestly one of the clunkiest parts of the whole movie, which usually the crawl is kind of a nothing thing. It's like, eh, it gets you up to speed. But, like, the fact that it says, here's Palpatine, and we're going to go to Exegol right now. It's like, it's like a, you know, a, a newscast. It's like, and we uh, cut live to Kylo Ren, who's <laughs> on the scene. Like, yeah. Well, and I, I think that... Um... A lot of the disappointment that's been here from from fans is in part because you're anticipating this movie, right? You have little bits and pieces, and and Disney does a pretty great job with their trailers of giving you enough cool tidbits, but no idea of what really what's going to happen. So you know that Palpatine's going to show up, or Sidious is going to show up in the in the movie somehow, right? But you don't know how. So with that, you're like, okay, cool. Like it'll be a build up. We'll figure out like how he's been around, or why he's been around, or what's going on, or why he's back. Like all these things. And I think everyone came up with their own theories. Everyone came up with their own ideas, you know, their own expectations of when he's going to show up in the movie. And then the movie just plops him down immediately and says, there he is. Like, literally from the crawl itself, even though I was like, oh, they're already explaining Palpatine. That's a little weird. The way it was described was still kind of interesting. It was like they've heard an ominous, like, crackly radio broadcast that seems to be coming from Palpatine. They don't know if he's really back or not. I'm like, that would be a cool idea yeah. if we're hearing Palpatine talking through the radio waves of the galaxy and it hasn't been confirmed if he's actually back or not. Let's play with that idea. Maybe there's a weird Sith cult that's trying to resurrect him, whatever. But instead, they literally just bring back Return of the Jedi and have Palpatine back again. It's like literally a puppet on a string. And the the world building spends a lot of time on Project Cinder, which we should probably have a whole episode about, about how there's a contingency plans after he dies where droids spring into action and go still like tell um, admirals what to do. And one of the things that you would never know unless you read any of the books is that one of his contingency plans was to retreat and he literally tells some of the generals that he's handpicked to basically make it so the rest of the fleet is destroyed and he wipes the board clean so that only the strongest best admirals survive and then they're whisked away to the unknown regions where they become the first order later you would never know that by watching the movies and the fact that the Sentinel droids, by the way, the Sentinel droids are cool as hell. If you've played uh, Battlefront, they're like just so perfectly creepy because they're this red monolith with like a a face that mm -hmm. turns into Palpatine's screen, Little and it ghost. looks like that's like a Palpatine ghost. Like I wow. really, really wanted this to be a Sentinel droid or some kind of AI in general. So like maybe like Exegol had a mainframe where all these Sentinel droids uploaded. Or something like that. Some like little thing that would have been cooler than just Palpatine puppet string. Yeah. On the note of uh, Ian, Mc... I can never pronounce his last name. Ian McDermott? McDermott. It's McDermott? just like McDermott, but Ian okay. McD. So yeah. you guys remember the Teen Choice Awards in 2005? Yeah. Oh, of course I do. So he was <laughs> nominated. Was he was nominated for Choice Movie Villain. <laughs> Did and he get was... a surfboard? 
Uh, no, nominated for choice oh, movie yeah. villain, defeated by Jim Carrey from Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. That movie's events. that old. But even worse than that, so then this got me down the rabbit hole of the Teen Choice Awards 2005, choice action movie actor. Okay, so Hayden Christensen, nominated. Uh, Orlando Bloom, nominated for Kingdom of Heaven. Matt Damon, nominated for Born Supremacy. Heath Ledger, Lords of Dogtown. Brad Pitt, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Matthew McConaughey, Sahara. But the winner, defeating all of those actors, Chad Michael Murray for House of Wax. That's the most 2005, like, <laughs> nominee list and winner. Uh, uh, thank you, Alex. This was getting really negative and sad, and that just made me so much happier. Yeah, well, I was I was looking to see what other movies this fellow's been in, and really, he's been in 15 movies, and six of them are Star Wars. So yeah. uh, I can't listen to you guys disparage the Senate anymore on this podcast. The Senate. <laughs> so you <laughs> like the Palpatine plot. I uh, I don't like the Palpatine plot. I just love Palpatine as a character in Star Wars. Like I, I love the I like the actor. I like sure. how he portrays the character. Um, I love how he became, you know, the leader of the Empire. I think it's a great story. Not well executed in the movies, but the actual way the story is written is cool. But I, uh, you know, I already told you guys before. I, I thought it was kind of weird how he just ends up all of a sudden being, you know, behind all of this. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I don't think, I'm curious, uh, again, it's another thing that's probably a little more, more nuanced, but all the people who were really pissed about Snoke being killed off unceremoniously in the last one, does the explanation that he was a failed clone of Palpatine make those people satisfied now that there's like <laughs> yeah. a reason for him existing? And there was two more of them, like, yeah. really pathetic in that tub. That was and stupid. To, <laughs> and to another point, Chris, like, I, I don't really hate on Palpatine. Like, I think that um, as he currently exists, like, he is just a really funny, memeable he is. character. He is really funny and memeable. <laughs> yeah, and, and I love I love that. But, like, outside of that, if you try to make me take the character seriously and you don't really do anything new with him, I'm just going to keep on seeing him as, like, a memeable character. With Vader, like, Vader is very memeable. Anakin from the prequels was pretty memeable. But, like, what they did with him in the Clone Wars series, that actually made you look at that, like, pre-Vader uh, Anakin as something that had some like complexity and interesting aspects to it where you weren't always thinking about coarse sand every time you thought about that era of Anakin or whatever. Mm -hmm. That hasn't really happened. I mean, maybe there's the the Legends books. Maybe talk a little about, about the life of Sheev having his own little house of cards uh, situations going on. But you don't you never really hear that much about anything that really makes Sidious very interesting and you don't see anything in the movies either. So I think it's a fair criticism within the realm of the movies to say that. And I have to admit, like I have a lot of outside of the movie influence on my, on that opinion. And sure. also also same with like Anakin. Like I really was like not how could you really be convinced that he is this he was this virtuous amazing jedi knight based on what we saw in the clone wars like you know that really wasn't a lot to go off i mean just that one movie you know mm -hmm. committed genocide <laughs> yeah like that's that was a big part of his resume yeah, yeah. in that movie he, even the young I, ones would that be an afterthought on anyone's resume like, <laughs> like yeah. just sliding it in there under special skills well, here's, this is also, I, I know this is probably a little off topic, but it does tie in with this movie about, and about redemption for Jedi or Sith is just because you switch back, like, Hey guys, you know, I decided the errors of my ways. I am no longer the dark side. I'm good again. And it's, no one's like, well, what about all those people you killed? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It comes after the, you know, go no justice for the younglings. Right? As long as you use the force, we get it, man. You had a weird uh, you know, time. You were young, crazy things happened. Come on back. Yeah, I love yeah. Ben Solo coming back by the way, but it is he still did, you know, a lot of bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be my. We'll we'll get into Kylo's turn in a second cuz that's my third bucket, but Yeah, and they keep driving us home. The one, the one, th okay, one more Palpatine plot sucks, Bucket. Um, the no reason that Ray needs to be a Palpatine. This movie could exist even, like, literally, if we didn't do any of the other changes I'm proposing, just, she can just be a nobody still. It's fine. I like that she was a nobody. It was more inspiring to me. 
Um, the fact that we had to shoehorn this like family parentage thing in to make it quote unquote more, I don't know, believable. I, I hated it. So, and I want to take a moment just to see if I remember it correctly. So Palpatine initially wants Kylo to go kill Ray, correct? For what reason? Right? And then he wants Ray to kill Kylo. Yeah. And then he wants Ray to kill him. So it's like, what, what, what's your goal here, man? Like, and of course, I'm sure people who are an apologist will say like, no, 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 it was all part of his manipulative plan to get Kylo and Ray to both show up in front of them. And then like, whatever. And it just felt like this, again, an afterthought where there was no consistency and no real true like, wait, why are you having her do this? Or why are you having him do this? It was just this whole like chaotic, ridiculous stuff. So. No, and I think this would have helped the Kylo plot a little bit, too, if we didn't see Kylo meet the Emperor and get that kind of clunky, hey, bring her to me. She's not who you would expect. Yeah. And, like, I would love this to be, like, a little bit more secretive because in the books, again, they this Pablo book is pretty great at explaining what Kylo actually did there and why. Because you know how he, he gets his helmet stitched back together and it kind of freaks out Hux. And Huck's like, what the hell is happening? He's like, I see that you don't like my appearance. And the idea was that when the First Order went away and like became the First Order, that was the contingency plan for Palpatine's military might. Whereas the Sith Eternal, Exegol Stadium, watching motocross, that was his spiritual successor. So then the plot was the spiritual successor would meet the military might, and the people in the military weren't buying this kind of thing. So the idea that he would come with this mask and he's all mystical, they hate, they're supposed to hate that point. So I would have loved to seen Kylo done this, do this off screen, come back and cosplay again as a bad guy and like come in and try to like, Hey, we're going to do all this stuff that we're going to this planet with all these cool cult members and it's fine. We're going, but then like turn it into a thing where Kylo tries to lure Ray to Exegol because, like, hey, I have more information about your parentage. And then it actually not being true. And then he somehow changes his mind when he gets there or whatever. But, like, uh, it just doesn't – you wouldn't know this without reading the books and uh, whatever. So – and then this is just a small side, small detail, small change. Wouldn't it have been a lot cooler if instead of him stitching his helmet back together with just the shards of his helmet, he took shards of his helmet and the, like, old Vader helmet and yeah. just, like – and melded them together like that would be a lot cooler and it would also say more about his character right than just it's like i'm really trying to drive the point home that on. i'm this guy's grandson you know yeah yeah and i had some ideas about the crawl real quick too it's like um it would be cool for us to know that the first order was taking over systems because that would might make more sense to why this is a problem for everybody. It would also be cool to know that Ray was training as Leia's apprentice for a whole year. Because <laughs> you really have no idea that that's the case, other than, hey, go make the training run. Um, I'm CGI Leia, cool. Which um, she totally feels like a, like an NPC from a video game. It's just right. like, Ray comes back, she's like, hey, I got the thingy for the Sith Wayfinder. Here, what do I do now? Uh Never underestimate a droid. Okay, great. I'll go and do the other thing now. Bye. Can you pretend like this is good news? Like that whole like the Greg Grunberg thing? Yeah. It's like obviously that's not what was meant to happen. But yeah. um, like I – again, I had to read the book to realize she was training with him because that was not actually very obvious to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so my next – my third and final bucket – would in a in a perfect world would be make sure that Carrie Fisher doesn't die in 2016. Yeah. But in all reality, this movie does really suffer from not having her because this is supposed to be her movie, and we would probably I will all I mean when I think back on this I'll always think what if what what would this movie have been like with Carrie Fisher in it because it would probably be well more thought out and they wouldn't have to sprint to do all these different things but the kylo ren turn back to ben solo but one makes no sense and two is not believable and doesn't just just kind of happens did, mm -hmm. did anybody else really understand that whole turn of events so that, that he comes back to ben no <laughs> i mean i've i've heard a theory that like uh, Leia uses the last of her power to create the image of Han Solo and broadcast that to him, and that's what kills her in the same way that, like, Luke broadcasting himself to 
the salt planet killed him. But that's another that's a big stretch again where I'm like, first of all, that should have been Luke showing up in front of him, not Han. Like I feel like that would have been a lot more impactful yeah. personally. But I, yeah, I didn't understand it. He got stabbed. Clearly, he was like I screwed up. That was supposed to be Leia. Like that scene yeah. between him and Han was supposed to be Leia because Han, obviously, you know, Harrison Ford doesn't want to be in these things anymore. I, no. I'm so I felt so bad for him. Like, oh, you're in this again, bud. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and what I've read is that she, um, does like a really complex force hug across the galaxy and essentially does kind of what you said with Luke, but like more, not so much like broadcasting Han Solo, but more of like, Hey Ben, I'm going to die now. Feel bad about that. And then Ray feels (laughs) that too, of course, because Ray's there and she has a connection to the force and that's her her mentor currently although again you wouldn't know that um and then she feels it too and then is mad and then stabs him and then again there's no stakes and she's like oh okay you're you're healed but i'm gonna go now see you later and apparently that death conjures the memory of han solo and then all of a sudden he's he's good tosses the lightsaber so you so the him being there is is because of Leia is what you're saying, like, because that didn't make any sense to me at all that he could be there. Him, uh, apparently, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure. And I don't. And the funny thing is, I with appreciate this bucket, your effort for trying. Making Kylo's turn feel more authentic. I don't have a good, good reason. I don't have a good idea for this one. It's just all I know is I think the 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 point of these three movies was to bring Kylo Ren back. Like that's clear. And it just, it was just so, kind of a turd. They might have had, I mean, they, they definitely had certain plans of how to use Leia and that. The way that I see her, the way that I think they could have done it was, again, continue to use Ray and continue to use Luke, because Luke, Luke was the last one that was supposed to be able to, like, bring him to be the hero they all expected he would be. And through his, like, own fall to the dark side for a brief moment, is what caused Kylo to, to push himself away and give himself over to Snoke and all these things. And I think it would have been a much more impactful scene. I mean, Last Jedi ends with Luke saying, see you around, kid. So if if Luke came back in that moment and was like, like, Kylo, I failed you, and I'm sorry, or like something like that, yeah. to allow him to realize that like part of his reason for turning to the dark side was because of the failure of the other people in his life and that he doesn't have to hold himself accountable for those things, you know? Like, I think there's something there. Um, but instead, we had to use this like weird Han thing where he's like, hey, I love you, son, even though you've killed so many people. Still love you. <laughs> and me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know you're, uh, hey, son, hey, son, hey, uh, uh, I know you're going to go back to uh, to that Palpatine guy. Uh, what am I even talking about here? Yeah, you're going to go back there, and uh, it's not going to matter because he didn't really need you in the beginning. But uh, be good now. Okay. You just, right. you just see uh, an airplane crash in the distance, and he like walks up on the, <laughs> the thing. He's yeah. like, oh, "Hey, I'm here now." Uh, shit. Also, I'm not uh, real. I'm just a memory. Bye. So I'm good. fucking done with these fucking. Okay. Anyway, um, time to be good. Uh, Son, where's my you, check? Could you stop fucking around? Uh, that's not. That's uh, not uh, how the force works. Uh, uh, <laughs> Chewie, we're home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I agree. It just again, and that was another moment to me that just felt like manipulative where it was just i know what you guys want me to feel right now but you haven't earned it and this doesn't like make sense like i don't even understand why han is here but you're trying to just distract me with like but you like harrison ford right look he's back <laughs> and he's right it's like, there well, but why like why hasn't he shaved here? for weeks yeah he was a terrible a father yeah who left for a decade <laughs> go get some spice and never came back <laughs> Yeah. So let me, let me bring this all together, folks, because this was a bleak episode. Because I again, I walked out of that theater, and I can't remember who I said it to first, Patrick or, or Chris. I'm like, I, I I don't know how we can talk about this movie. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we can have a podcast anymore. Like, how can we, as uh, Star Wars fanboys, uh, have a podcast and we didn't like the ninth movie? I think you asked and me the... if I saw if I still wanted to stick around. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you still want to do this thing, Chris? <laughs> You're like, Chris, I'm so sorry. I was like, you didn't make the movie, so I don't know why you're apologizing. 
<sighs> I, I dragged you into this. Yeah. Um, but in the two weeks, I'm glad. See, this is our this is our whole this is our product, right? We're not hugely reactionary. We're more thought out, and we don't do we don't do news content. We do evergreen content for you. That's what we we deliver, and we promise here at Star Wars is canon. But the thing is, is it's taken me three. It's almost three weeks now since this movie to realize that I actually. As much as I dislike this movie, I love talking about it. Like, I yeah. absolutely love anybody, any one of my family members, you know, like, I'll talk to normies, and they're like, yeah, it was a fine movie, and I'll go, you're wrong! And then, I'll, you know, we'll go into 20 minutes, and then they all hate me. Are um, you calling me a normie? No, you're not a normie. I'm just saying, like, the, uh, a, Whatever, scene, like Nick. A, a lot of normies like this movie, but not that you, people who like this movie aren't normies. That's not, that's, that's not the logical contingency here. But I love talking about this, and now... Now that this arc is done, it, I'm kind of getting some vibes that we might leave the Age of Resistance. Like there might be the the Resistance TV show is still there, but we might not talk about that for a while. So the thing is, is we can dig into all these extra canonical materials, and we can have episodes about the First Order and try to make sense of it. And honestly, the First Order is kind of cool, uh, and we can talk about it and read the bo- books and bring you this content that will be fun and engaging and hilarious at the same time. And uh, I, I don't want to end. It's, it's okay <laughs> that we didn't like it. I, mean, I want each of you to tell me one thing you liked from the movie. Bob and Frick, yes. done. <laughs> well, we, we, all, we all have to have a different one. Bo- Patrick already took Babu. I, I can take a different one if you guys want Babu. No, you, you, you have Babu. You okay. can have Babu. I have more things that I like than you guys probably, so you can take that one. Chris, what, what's what's another thing? I I still I thought uh, Adam Driver was amazing in the movie. I really Agreed. liked his performance. He and all the scenes Best with part him of the sequence in general. Yeah, I mean, just all the scenes with Ray. I was very much, I was on the edge of my seat. Like I was very much engaged whenever they had a scene together. I really did feel emotional way with with their fights and. They actually did have a through line from the movies with these two characters, despite the fact that there were a lot of other things that they abandoned and a lot of other things that didn't make sense. Um, those two people, and also Ray, uh, she was, I thought she was great too. And she evolved as an actress across these movies. So that's my positive. <laughs> I, uh, I really liked the planet of Kajimi. I would have loved to spend more time there. The party it was planet? Like kind of- it was snowy and oh. like there's all these different layers. Space and Germany. They're all yeah. It was space, oh it was space, space Germany. Germany yep, yep, yep. It was space Poland more like. Um, so like they um, and they're all wearing different things that we haven't seen them in before. Like uh, Ray has a hood up and she looks menacing and awesome and like holds that lightsaber out to to Zori Bliss. Zori Bliss. Her her costume looks really cool. And like the whole I loved her character. We just didn't get enough of it. Um, would have, I think that would have uh, also helped Poe's plot as well uh, if we would have gotten more of it because obviously there's a history there. But like Kajimi, I think might have been one of my favorite places to visit, and I want, I wanted, I would love that to have been like maybe 25 minutes instead of whatever seven. And Baba Frick. Baba Frick. Baba Frick <laughs> lives there. So uh, I will say to your point, Nick. Um, that yeah walking out of this movie didn't feel great felt pretty disappointed but what i will say is that clearly i mean we're still huge fans of this because it's not we aren't just complaining we aren't just saying this was a bad movie we aren't just saying this is a waste of time we're just leaving it at the it's negative not a waste of time pa- part part of the reason i think that we're so frustrated that you and i specifically are so frustrated is because through all of the star wars content we've consumed through all of the experiences we've had watching different movies, playing different games, reading different books, we know the potential of the Star Wars lore and all the cool things that can come of it. So when we see certain things that we see as just kind of lame excuses or half-assed or half-baked you know, story plots or underdeveloped characters or whatever, we see all this potential going to waste. And it's really frustrating. And especially when we've been waiting so long, coming up with own, our own like little sparks of ideas about maybe this is what will happen. So um, that that's a big part of me as to like why I'm not particularly afraid about what how we're gonna feel about Star Wars moving forward. The other thing I'll say is that um, 
I really hope they do move on from the Skywalkers after this. Yeah, I love the Skywalkers. I think that, you know, I, I'll always want to read stories about Luke and other mediums or see him pop up in other, like, TV shows or something for little moments. But at this point, like, I think we learned from Mandalorian. Like, we don't need the Skywalkers to watch good Star Wars. Um, from Jedi Fallen Order, we don't need the Skywalkers, which maybe the Skywalkers do show up. I haven't played it yet. But I've heard really good things <laughs> about the story. And... Uh, <laughs> And and a lot of people have said that it's you know a, f a fun offshoot of a lot of the lore that we know, um, where it's playing in different areas and different confines. Yeah. So Star Wars is a big broad universe. We'll hire great creative people, great directors to create their own stories with an established plot line. If it's going to be multiple movies, and have them go wild and play with all the creatures they can create in Star Wars. I like that take. I, I will say this too, and I think this has. I, as much as I love it, and it's my favorite because of nostalgia reasons and just like you know my own feelings, uh, Return of the Jedi is the weakest one of their of the original trilogy. But like for me, it makes the other movies stronger because of that. It's my favorite again for other reasons. So I think this movie makes me like. The, the last Jedi more. And even though it does kind of walk back some of it, it still exists. The last Jedi is still a thing. Like I can, can I can still revisit it and love it more. Which ironically, yeah. that's the thesis of that movie is that mythology will like live on beyond everything else. Right. The legend of Luke yeah. Skywalker can't be killed. So the last Jedi can't be killed. So I can go and like live in that movie in my brain more because I loved it so much. And like, I, and I said this on Twitter, I want to go back to that one hour period after you and I watched, got to the end of, of the last Jedi and that hour between seeing the end and logging onto Twitter. I want to go back to that hour and live that again. Cause I was, it was pure bliss. Like this movie is awesome. It is like probably the best star Wars movie. Although I've kind of walked that back a little bit. Um, like that feeling can still live in me, even if I didn't like this one. And the fact that we're going into other offshoots, and other uh, uh, things like, by the way, the rumor is for the next film is going to be Old Republic. So going into other things that we love for established eras, I think one thing is this era was hard. This was they completely shoved the Zon books away to the side and they said, we are thinking of a new sequel era. And this is really hard. And I think this showed that it was not an easy win for anybody. And if we can go back to other things, like, of course, uh, the Jedi Fallen Order goes back to the Purge era, you know, in between the Republic. Uh, again, an era that's really great. Um, the Mandalorian is kind of a sequel era a little bit, but close enough. So um, there's all these different places we can go and camp out in and still love it. Knights of the Old Republic, baby. Let's do it. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. So, um... Yeah, we're not going to pack it up yet. We got plenty of plans uh, to keep this going, even though I, I I wanted to for a second there after this movie. But I'm going to live in that hour. I'm going to think of a name of that hour between uh, the Last Jedi and the Internet. So yeah, I got no help for you. Yeah, or I just live in Alex's brain for a bit. Nick's trying to do the uh, Ray hovering and saying. Uh, be with me, be with, be with me, me. Be with to me. the to the voices <laughs> from right after Last Jedi, which yeah. again, and I sorry, I got not to end on a negative note, but just an optimistic one, a wishful one. Why don't we see the Jedi when she had all the voices of the Jedi with her? Why don't we see all the Jedi them, ghosts? Right? That would have been nice. I would have liked to have seen them. Yeah, anyway, we had to there, see Palpatine. Why couldn't we see them? Give Hayden Christensen his justice. Yeah, yeah I'm for that. So it's one right. put that. Any other closing thoughts? I'll still like a Star War. I've already yeah. moved on, and there's a lot of good ways to move on. You know, from this, there's a couple new audio books out there, uh, and Star or Star Wars books. I just downloaded uh, Master and the Apprentice, which is about Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan Kenobi. Off to a good start. I'm already I'm already enjoying it. So there's so much other Star Wars goodness to enjoy. I'm gonna check out those Kylo Ren comics. Yeah, oh, are. they're good. They're yeah. really good. Yeah. The first one is really good. Um, also, the novelization for The Rise of Skywalker comes out in two months. I mean, not to say that that's going to walk anything back because those books don't do that. But they're, I mean, again, it might be one of those things that explains some things a little bit better. 
Like what actually ha- like when I get to the Leia dying chapter, I'm sure I'm going to have some new thoughts about it. So anyway, um, that's I think let's call it a wrap. That was a that was, yeah. we, we went a little we long on that one. We fixed it. <laughs> we fixed we fixed it, guys. So my yeah, everyone talks about head cannon. My head cannon now has all of my better ideas, right? Now and everybody go on twitter.com and start harassing JJ Abrams and bully Carrie Russell until she leaves twitter.com. Yeah, twitter.com. Yeah, release the JJ cut. Guys, that was <laughs> oh, the God. JJ cut. Yeah, that stop with JJ all of that. Cut. No one actually yeah. knows what's going on at Lucasfilm. If, just because you're on Reddit. Sorry, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go on a ramp, but the internet doesn't right. always Only know. Only this guy knows what's going on. At Lucasfilm. That guy knows for sure what's going on. Well, yeah, We didn't talk about the Knights of Ren, but completely. Neither did the movie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Zinger. Zinger. Yeah. Anyway, so we've been loose cannon. Thank you guys. We've been loose. We've been cannoned. Um, welcome to 2020, guys. Thank you. I hate it. Um, so <laughs> uh, see us on all of the social medias. Give us a good review. Uh, give us a Patreon thing. Patrick will, will uh, draw you a picture. Um, but until next time. Farewell, 2020ites. Take care. Bye. See you, everyone. Bye.